In this exercise, we will work with a correlation for fluids flowing through a packed bed. And I actually took this from exercise 7.3 to 4, mass transfer of a liquid in a packed bed. The book is Transfer Processes and Unit Operations by Jankopoulos, 3rd edition. So let me even start by the overall diagram. So I have this part right here flowing and I have here lots of packings and I have a gas. And of course, what you will expect is some kind of off reaction. Well, not reaction, some type of interaction in the mass transfer case. So pure water at 26.1 Celsius flows at the following rate, which is cubic meters per second, through a packed bed of benzoic acid spheres. Interesting, these spheres are benzoic acid and this is water. The total surface area of the spheres in the bed are as follows. So if you were to calculate the area of all those spheres, which is kind of hard, is as follows. The diameter of the spheres are given. So technically you can relate these two. If you have the diameter of a sphere, you can calculate the area. Void fraction is 43.6%. The total diameter of the tower will be 0 0.067 meters. And the solubility of benzoic acid in water is given as follows, which I'm pretty sure we are going to eventually relate to concentration or molarity. And for this process, A, predict the mass transfer coefficient Kc, and B, compare with the actual value of 4.66 times 10 to the minus 6 ms. Okay, so essentially what we want to do is to calculate the uh, mass transfer coefficient for the packed bed. Analysis. We gotta use mass transfer rate approach. Benzoic acid is acting as a particle, so technically it's a solid. Water is the solvent, so this is the flow material. Expect the solution of benzoic acid in water. And this is interesting because I know, guys, I have been telling you that we are not going to use solids. But let's say that we are not modeling the solid per se, but the concentration of this material when it goes to solution. Mass transfer will be assumed as non-laminar, so either turbulent or transitory. Case can be assumed to be dilute. Why dilute? Because as you can see here, this solubility is very low. And let us start with the correlation. Get all the data required for water and benzoic acid. So water, we have temperature, viscosities, densities, and diffusivity. Technically, this is the diffusivity of benzene in water. Now we need to verify the ranges, Reynolds and Schmidt numbers. So for Reynolds, I will need, why am I, wait for it, Reynolds. I have everything for Reynolds. I have the density, yes, I have the velocity, all right. So I need to calculate the velocity for Reynolds, but the problem is that for velocity, I gotta calculate the area, because I know that velocity of the fluid is equal to the volumetric flow rate divided by the area of the flow, and the area is essentially the diameter of the tower. So area of any circle will be pi divided by four times diameter to the second power and I do this I get the area and then I get the volumetric flow rate divided by area square square and you get meters per second now that I have velocity I have the density the diameter of the particle so that's very important not the diameter of the tank and the viscosity ensure that meters 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 goes away kilograms kilograms seconds seconds and we have ensured our Reynolds number, which in my opinion is very low, but let's see if it is within the limits. Schmidt number, we have viscosity, density, and diffusivity, 700. Let us now continue and recall that we were talking about dilute solution, meaning that K apostrophe may be assumed as K normal, meaning that the log mean values whatever they are, will be assumable to be equal to 1. If you don't recall this, go back to the mass transfer section 
in which we talk UMD and we relate this and we recall that we needed a log mean value, mathematical value and that when we have very low concentrations or dilute cases the very complex mathematical algebraic value becomes 1 and Reynolds and Schmidt are within the ranges essentially what I need to do is simply substitute what I know so I have the void space which is 43.6% I have Reynolds number 1.15 to the minus 2 thirds And I get JD equals 2.277. But this is not the final answer, guys. Remember that we're working with correlations and dimensionless numbers. This is just a dimensionless number. What I need is actually our K value. Technically speaking, KC value. So remember that by definition, actually, let me go back all the way to, yeah. JD number is given as follows. I have the Schmidt number and I have std which will be this one right here so i need to combine these here so i will get my jd value equals f divided by c v times my schmidt number to the two thirds and that's what i'm doing uh wait for it yeah so i knew that the schmidt number is right here but the KC value, which is F and the velocity, which is here, my JD value, I just got it here. And now it's simply just plugging data. The Schmidt number was 702 times, or to the two thirds. Reynolds number is, oh, sorry, Reynolds number. JD value remains the same. And the velocity, well, we already know it. Substitute data, solve for KC, and you are done. Actually, the k value, which remember, technically speaking, is k without apostrophe. But because we assume dilute solution, we can assume it, this is correct. And I didn't include this slide, but remember that we needed to compare, wait for it, compared to this number right here. And it's pretty near 4.66 times 10 to the minus 6, 4.66 times 10 to the minus 6 uh engineeringly speaking this is pretty pretty certain or near so i will say that this is very great to compare with